Now I'm going to be looking at the additional models of uh, oligopoly and more specifically I'm going to be looking at the dominant price leader model and then I'm going to look at the cartel formation right and just to make things clear we are saying that if there is a dominant price leader model it means there is one firm that is bigger than the other ones and this firm is the one that will determine the price of the product and then the other smaller firms will just um, follow this bigger firm and what the bigger firm will do or the leader in the market will do is I'm going to draw the market here and then this is the quantity and this is the price and then I'm going to draw the demand curve for the product so if I draw the demand curve for the product is the demand curve so what the leader will do is instead of drawing the supply curve for the market he will draw the supply curve for the smaller firms so which means he ex excludes himself so therefore in this case now we have this and then this is the supply curve of the smaller firms so now this will be the equilibrium price given that there is no leader in the system now what the leader will then do he will know that these guys are willing to produce this much at this price and so on and the equilibrium is here so then he will go and draw his own diagram and this is what he will do he will determine what he wants to produce and then this will be the demand curve for the leader and then this will be the marginal cost of the leader and remember that the marginal cost is actually the supply curve so you must remember that marginal cost and supply curve is the same thing but you will see why i put marginal, marginal cost now what this guy will do is he will then say that my demand curve is here where is my marginal revenue then he will draw his marginal revenue this way this is his marginal revenue marginal revenue of the leader and then we know that where marginal revenue equals to marginal cost that's the profit maximization point so therefore he will say okay this is where i maximize the profit so he will produce q1 and then he was going to go up and then and then and then and then and then the piece price will be p1 then now he knows that now he wants to produce this p1 to produce q1 and then the price will be p1 then he will be he will move on this line goes this way and then his p1 is somewhere here and then this is where p1 is and then this is what he's gonna produce so but he knows that this already is going to be produced by by the small firms because this one is on the small firm if price is here small firms will produce here then this q1 which is o0 here is this one here this size this size here you see then the demand now is satisfied so therefore now we are saying this point here from here to there is equals to o q1 and then o q1 that is that is that's exactly that so therefore now we understand that what this guy is doing is he is producing this excess demand that's where he's producing. he's producing excess demand so therefore it means if the price goes down and then you produce more if it goes up then you produce more. but if it happens that p1 is here then the guy is not going to produce anything so this according to this model it says this excess demand here is exactly equal to oq1 and oq1 is from here to there now let us look at the um, um, cartel formation now cartel formation now here there is no leader we have the firms probably oligopoly firms of the same size and 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 what i'm going to do is i'm just going to draw their 
diagrams this way, this is from A and then this is from B. And then what these firms are doing because more or less this is P, this is P, and then this is Q and this is Q. They are equal in size. So there is no one to be the leader or anything. What they do is now they must agree to form the cartel, which means they agree to fix the prices and determine the price. But in order to do that, what they will do is they will appoint a central agent. And a central agent is the one who is going to determine the quotas for each firm to produce. And what this guy will do is he will now, that is the agent, will now say this is the price and then this is the, the quantity. And then his first look at the marginal cost of firm A, this is marginal cost of firm A, and then the marginal cost of firm, of firm B. And then he'll take the two marginal costs, he adds them together, he comes out here with the marginal cost of firm A plus marginal cost of firm B. So, so this is sort of total marginal cost. And then what he will do now is he will determine the demand curve for the market. And then, you know, every time if you have the demand curve, now you can draw the marginal revenue because you know the properties of marginal revenue. Now marginal revenue is below. So now he's looking for the point where the industry profit is determined. And now he sees that now this is where marginal cost equals to marginal revenue in the total because this is the one for the market. And then he know, okay, both firms must produce QT, which means Q total. And then the price must be what? P1. Now, the price must be P1. And, and now all these firms must sell using P1. So, the price now is known because remember the price will be the demand care. So, P1 is here. P1 is there. So therefore, this will be what? Will be the price for this firm. This will be the price for this firm. Because it's coming from the market anyway. Now, what these guys will do. Now, let me just throw the average cost curves. And then I say, this is the one for B. AC for B. And then this is AC for A. So you can say AC or you can say ATC is fine. It's the same. Now, what is going to happen is now they must give them the quota to say, no, this is what we need to produce. But how will they do that? We draw a line from this profit maximizing point here. And then we go down this way. When we touch the marginal cost of B, we go down to Q. That's exactly what the guy must produce, QB. And then if you go up, the cost is here. And then if you go up, you can see that this guy is making this profit. The shaded area is his profit. And then we've continue with this line that is coming from the market here and then we go this way where we touch the marginal cost for A then we go down this is QA then A must produce this and then when you go up where you touch the cost curve that's the cost and you go up where you touch this one that's the price and then this is the profit for A now let me just say this is origin, this is origin, this is origin, which means zero. Okay. So if you look at the first one, OQ1, OQ1, oh well, OQA plus OQB, which is this one here, is exactly equal to OQT. So which means what? This means that this space here plus this space here is equal to this space here. Well, thank you very much. I will come back later um, and uh, probably in around chapter 10 or so to teach you about the transfer pricing. But for now, we were dealing with um, dominant price leadership model and cartel formation in the system. Thank you very much.